house. What we need is the presence of the Lord in the house. Amen. We have your Bibles tonight. Let's go to the word of the Lord. We're going to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 47. And we're going to read at verse number eight and nine. And then we're going to go back and read some more scriptures right along the same chapter there. Ezekiel chapter 47, starting with verse eight. Then said the, he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, or they shall be healed, and everything shall live whether the river cometh. Lord, we pray tonight. Help us to have understanding of thy word. Help us not to let our minds veer off into something from yesterday or tomorrow. But let us captivate our thoughts right now in the name of Jesus. We bring it, everything under captivity. So that no one walk away tonight wondering what the Bible said. What the word of God said. We are subject to your word right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is in the house, we bring their thoughts into captivity by the spirit of the living God, that this is more than just a word, more than just a Bible, but is backed up by your spirit, O oh Lord, the living word, if you would, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Is it okay if I take my time tonight? Amen. This book of Ezekiel is a very uh, strange, to say the least. You got to get the, the, the setting, and we're going to try to, to leave you with a setting and so that you can understand what's going on. I never like to take a scripture, a verse, and just preach out of it and get it out of content. So I'm not going to take it out of content, but it's the same God that is talking to Ezekiel concerning the future is the same God that is talking to us today. And whatever's going on in Israel, I've always told you, God has got a plan for the church just as well. And there is a river is the title of the message. But before I get into the message tonight, I want to give uh, thanks to the brethren um, that do the Sunday school. Brother Angelo Garcia and Brother CJ from... Lehigh Acres, United Pentecostal Church. They get together on Sunday morning and give us Sunday school. And we had a wonderful time in Sunday school this morning. And uh, I learned, I learned, every time you go to the Word of God, you better learn something because that's almost like saying, oh, I already know it all. Um, we were talking to a young man the other day. He says, yeah, my pastor, the pastor there where I'm at, he said he likes to come over and give Bible studies to, to my wife and and He's too slow before he begins down the middle of the story. I already know how the story ends. So I just go to my room and I think to myself, you know how sad that you were already know all the word, but are doing nothing that is in the word. That's even sadder. I'd rather be in the place of his wife. His wife is very hungry, not, not his wife, but his girlfriend. Very, very hungry for the word of God. She's, she's going to churches and she's trying to, find something to satisfy. I say, praise the Lord. That woman is going to be filled. Yes. Blessed is the man that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, Amen. for he shall be filled as opposed to those that think they know it all. Anybody here know it all? I hope not. You might as well go home. But there's people that act like that. They, they think they already know. Ah, it's the same old story. No, it's not the same old story. God can take an old story and revive it and feed us. How many times have we heard that the message of David and Goliath? Huh? But man, every time a preacher gets a hold of that story, it's just like you can almost see the battle raging. You can almost see Saul and the and, and, and the armies are cowering in the in the cave, saying, "We know 
that we are the children of the Most High God. Amen. We know that our, our Redeemer liveth. And I know that he's going to give us a victory. But where is our victory coming from? And they're hiding. And the giant is out there boastfully saying, send me, a, send me somebody. Come on. And everybody's like, oh, I'd like to, Mr. Goliath. But man, you kill me if I get out there. Oh, but here comes a little boy. He says, I, I'll, you know, the Lord has delivered the bear and the lion into my hands. He's going to deliver this same giant. He's going to deliver him into my hand. And before the day was over, a little boy with courage and a slingshot and five little stones. And guess what else? The name of his God goes and destroys this giant. And, and, and so we never should get tired of the word of the Lord. I don't think I've ever preached out of the book of Ezekiel. It's a it's a it's, it's more of a Bible study. But I do want to take a, a little bit here today. But I want to say thank you to uh, the brethren for Sunday school this morning. They read out of the book of Psalms, chapter one, verse one. And when Brother Angelo read, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. God gave me a little bit of understanding. Can I share with you? Yeah. It's not the message, it's just on the side. Still the word of God. I began to think because I've always thought, Brother Freddie, that you are got to be going around all day thinking on the law of the Lord, right? Um, thou shalt not kill and fix something. Thou shalt not steal and, and thou shalt not commit adultery. And I'm going to be thinking about these things. But the Lord opened my understanding. He didn't say think of the law of the Lord. He said think in the law and in his law, inside of his law. Yeah. So once you come to church and you begin to understand how God operates, you listen to the preacher where, where the law and the boundaries are right. all day long. Let your meditations be within those boundaries. Right. If I'm going to work on my car, Brother Raymore, Lord, help me, Jesus. And if you figure something out, oh, man, I'm so smart. I am, I'm just, man, I'm, I'm very smart. No, thank you, Jesus. I didn't know how I was going to fix this, but praise the Lord, you gave me a, an idea. You're saying within the boundaries. Why are the boundaries so important? Because the Bible says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, man, it's pretty easy, right? It's not that difficult. And, 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 and in, the, in those perimeters, in the law, in his law, doth he meditate day and night. Now, the thoughts of our mind sometimes want to get outside, don't they? Start thinking on things that you shouldn't be thinking. It's time that you kick yourself back into the law of the Lord. Don't be thinking those thoughts. Yeah, yeah, she said this, and I'm going to, next time I want to let her have a piece of my mind. Is that what Jesus would do? Man, they, they crucified him, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we stay in the boundaries that, that God's law has provided for us. And then it gets really simple, right, when he says, love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and strength. And he said, the second one is like unto the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Is that hard to understand? Hard to do sometimes, but it's not hard to understand. And he said, in this does the law hinge. All the law and the prophets hinge on these two. And so he simplifies it. So it's not that difficult to walk and, and to delight yourself in the law of the Lord and, to, and in the law meditate day and night. And I think uh, we have better dreams when we, when we act like that. I had a dream, I told you the other day, that I, I see things. And I don't know why it's my age or what. But I see things in the middle of the night. I see spiders. And I'll be like, ha, ha, turn the light on and turn the light. You're dreaming. No, it's right there. It's a spider right there. And, and I don't know what's going on with my brain. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's spirits or anything like that. It's not a spiritual battle. It's just, I don't know. But usually it's something that I've seen before, like a spider or a scorpion or something. But the other day I saw like spaghetti. Just like uh, had the body up here, but the legs were like spaghetti and it looked like worms and it was moving and it was right there beside me in the bed. So I had to get the phone, turn the light on because in the middle of the night and it goes away. There was nothing there. There's no such thing as 
whatever I was seeing, which uh, was really surprising that I would see something that, I, that doesn't even. But that's the flesh, that's a, the, the body, the brain. But Sister Garcia said something. All of these things are going to pass away. Yeah. It's going to go by the wayside. What is it that you want in this world? A lot of money. You want a lot of food. You want a lot of clothes. All these things are going to pass away. Right. But he said, my word yeah. is never going to pass away. Yeah. And David said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Yeah. We can hide it up here, right? Where we think we know it all. But God said, hide it in your heart. Right. What happens when you hide it in your heart? It starts coming out. When, when somebody first gets the Holy Ghost, man, I love watching people when they first get the Holy Ghost. And I know I talk about the Galans all the time, but when they got the Holy Ghost, man, everything was brighter. Everything was more beautiful. The sunsets were just breathtaking. But well, they've always been there, Brother Galan. Yeah, but I've been born again. I've been born again, and now I begin to see the beauty and the wonder of the Lord. There is a river. The title of our message tonight, there is a river. The, the Gaithers, the, the Gaither vocal man sing a song that says, there is a river that flows from deep within. There is a fountain that frees the soul from sin. Come to these waters, there is a vast supply. There is a river that never shall run dry. There was a thirsty woman who was drawing from the well. Her life was ruined and wasted. Her soul was bound for hell. But then she met the master who told her of her, of her sin. And he said, if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. Why? Because there is a river that flows from deep within. There is a fountain that frees the soul from sin. Come to these waters. There is a vast supply. Sister Nancy hit it on the head. We ought to think of his mercy. We ought to think of his grace. If it was not for his grace and mercy. We preach in Spanish that the devil is a liar. One of the things the devil would like for you to think that you ran out of mercy. That somehow God ran out of grace for you. But if you're still alive and you're still breathing, God is saying, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Why does he say that to everybody? Because his mercy is forever great and wonderful. And somebody said, well, I just feel like I'm, in, I'm taking advantage of the Lord. Well, take advantage of the Lord. He wouldn't put it out there if he didn't want you to have it. That's one thing he does have a lot of. Got a lot of patience. He's patient. I don't know where I'd be today if it wasn't for the patience and the mercy and the grace of God that he's bestowed upon me. Ezekiel here is making reference uh, uh, of something that is futuristic. Something that is going to happen to the children of Israel. They were taken into Babylon uh, captive. And Ezekiel went in the first exile of the people that came out of Israel, out of Jerusalem, and into captivity, into Babylon. And, and then later on, there was another siege that they came and took the rest of the people of God, the, the Israelites, into captivity, into Babylon. Before the Ezekiel, there was a man by the name of Daniel. Some of you know, already know about Daniel. He, he had been t chosen uh, by the Babylonians to, to get the, the best of the Israelites, the, the handsome, the tall, the muscular, the healthy ones. And there went Daniel. This happened 10 years, about approximately about 10 years before Ezekiel was taken with the children of God into captivity. And so... We see now Ezekiel in captivity, in exile, in Babylon. And he begins to see something great. That Israel, first of all, had drifted away from God. So far from God. They were doing things that are unheard of. And he knows why they have been taken captive. He knows why they have fallen. Because they have forgotten their God. And they have worshipped 
idols and all kinds of ungodliness had taken on in, in uh, Israel. And so God allowed this to happen to them. And he begins to, to see in a vision. He begins to see something that is in a way horrendous. It's, it's horrible what he begins to see. And, and he is perplexed. And he wonders what is going on. But God begins to give him understanding that not only is it going to get worse, Ezekiel, this is going to get really bad. But I want you to know that there is, uh, there is hope. There is healing that is coming. One of these days, Ezekiel, the children of God, are going to come back to the land of promise. The land that they were taken out of. They were taken out of the land of promise. God had promised Abraham and had promised the children of Israel this property. And now they have been taken out. But they were. it's not that God was breaking his promises because God had given them the land forever. He said, this is going to be yours forever. But they forsook God. They, they walked away from God. And I began to see the, the similarity between the United States of America and in Israel. God has brought us into this land uh, back in the 1700s and people that were seeking freedom of worship and freedom from, from the oppression of the government came to this nation and they found worship to be good and the freedom to be great. But by and by, our seed and those that have come after our forefathers have fallen further and further and further away. The most of us here today even if you have been stooped in sin, even if you've done drugs, even if you've uh, been an alcoholic or whatever you, I know Brother Raymar, you've got a wonderful testimony of where God brought you from, but none of us can even begin to imagine the deplorable state of our nation today, things that are going on behind closed doors. Because there is so much iniquity, the Bible says the love of many shall wax cold. So America, you have fallen away from the mercies of God, not because God has forsaken America, but America has forsaken God. And you cannot walk away from the light and not go into darkness. It's just as simple as that. You walk outside from the lights in here at nighttime and you're going to walk right into darkness. And so we are experiencing, in a way, what Israel had let themselves go and if you have your Bibles and you want to look with me or if you just want to listen, the Bible says in chapter 47, verse 1, Afterwards, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold. This is something that, that God is allowing Ezekiel to understand. You're not always going to be a servant in Babylon. There is coming a day. There's going to be a thousand years, saints of God. Listen to me. There's going to be a thousand years on this world. Right now, we have a people that are trying to run our government, and you can see that they're running it into the ground. More every, every time they make a, a, a policy, it, it takes us further and further down a hole that most people that know polit uh, politics and they know finances they know that they're we're digging a hole that we're never going to be able to get out of we are going to become if we keep going in this direction we're going to become subject to china or to russia we're no, no longer going to be they've shut down our, our oil pipelines and and they're trying to take away all our cars they're trying to vaccinate all of us and and on and on and on we can see the the, the handwriting on the wall we're going downward we're going downward and we, if we could wake up, if we could just wake up, if America could just wake up right now, there's still hope for America. If we, if we could fall on our knees. I know we want to depend on the Republicans that are now taking over in, in a lot of places that are, that are more conservative. But I'm telling you, our help is not only coming from the Republicans. It's not going to only come from government and money. Our help comes from the Lord it needs to come from the Lord. We've got to understand. God, if you give us another day to breathe free in this country, we owe you all the praise and the glory. I'm thankful somebody here tonight decided I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to worship him. And so here, Ezekiel is seeing something that is going to happen during this uh, a thousand years of peace on earth. And God is going to be in charge. And he begins to see this vision 
Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that led the line, that had the line in his hand, went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. And he, he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. There was a, a time when the, the church of the living God was just getting their feet wet. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me forth. The waters were to the loins. You get the picture, saints of God? The church, triumphant. Sister Jade likes to sing, has been through the flood and has been through the fire. Oh, but this old church, we're getting deeper. Let the devil throw his darts. We were walking ankle deep. Then we were walking to our knees. But praise the Lord, the church of the living God. Now it's, it's down to the waist. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The water were to the knees. And again, measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and were to the loins. And afterwards, he measured a thousand. It, it w and it was a river that could not pass, that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. Saints of God. Can you vision this? I know this is for Israel when they get, get back into fellowship with God. But how much greater is this for the church that is in fellowship with God already? It's time for us to learn how to swim in the presence of the Lord in the river that is flowing. There is a river. There is a river that is flowing. There is revival, saints of God. Can I excite you to know? That there is revival going on. People all around us are baptizing people in Jesus' name. I don't want the river to go around in Mockley. I want the river to go right through in Mockley. United Pentecostal Church, flow through here, oh God. Flow through here. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, when he had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on both sides. Can you see souls, saints of God? Yeah. Remember that man said, I see man as trees. Yeah. And the Lord said, you shall be like a tree that is planted by the waters. Mm. Yeah. And God is speaking to us here tonight. He said, many trees on both sides. 150, Brother Angelo. And I'm going home. You guys can have a thousand or whatever you, what do you want. But I want 150 at least. And I don't know who's going to pastor the other thousand, but praise the Lord, I'm ready to pastor about 150. Amen. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Now there is something about a river that all of us know that a lot of trash goes into our, our rivers, right? A lot of oil and different things go into the into the rivers, but because of the river flowing, it's flowing, it's moving. It, it, all these things be, become discarded, so that the water is being purified by being a part of the river. And and if we allow the Holy Ghost to flow through the United Pentecostal Church, there is some junk that needs to be pushed aside. And the river, if you get in the river, saints of God, get in the Holy Ghost. When you come into the house of the Lord, get in the Holy Ghost. There's a river that is flowing. I know we can't see it with our eyes, but I'm here to tell you by faith that there is a river. And when saints, when people walk in, I want them to be able to feel the current. We were at a, at a, a cook, I don't know what you call a cookout. There were Sister Nancy and over there, they were, they were cooking over by the... Uh, b &L, they were cooking some food. And Brother Angelo and I went over there to pray for the food and to pray for God to bless the endeavor. And right away, people looked at us like, who are these guys? I don't know. They thought we were migrant immigration or, or inspectors that were inspecting the food. But everybody just kind of moved out of the way. 
and and I, I love the way Sister Nancy done. Hey, all of y'all come here. We're going to pray for the food. Every, yes, ma'am. And we began to pray. And a cookout, Brother Rios? Yeah, a cookout. We began to pray, and I felt the Holy Ghost fall yeah. all around there. I don't, I don't know if anybody else felt, but I felt the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we're a part of this river that is going. The gates of hell shall not prevail against this river, against the river that is flowing through the church. We can take this gospel into prisons. We can take the gospel into jailhouses. We can take it into homes that are broken. They don't know what they're going to do. Our little family's not here tonight, but they've been coming pretty regu regularly. I'll never forget when we first met them, they were destitute. All these kids didn't have no clothes, they had no food. We began taking food to them, and, and now they show up, and they're all smiles. They're all dressed really nice. They speak English. We had a candy rain out there. The, the one little guy, he was just smiling. I mean, he was just laughing by himself. Nobody else was laughing with him, but... He was so happy, and I told the church, we miss Sister Salazar. She used to get in there and get as much candy as, as she could. We're having a great time, and this little family, I asked the man two or three times, are you sure you don't need anything? No, we're good. God has given us a job. We're okay. We don't need anything. So now we look for somebody else that we can bless, and I hope that this Thanksgiving we can bless somebody else. God sent us somebody else, but there is a church, saints of God, that is moving. It's marching. We're not. We're not. We're not dead. We're not, the devil would like for us saying, "Oh, the church is dead. Nobody wants to go to church." On oh, the church is going to march on. Souls are going to be saved. Why? Because you can't stop this river. You cannot stop. Now, when I had returned, behold. At the bank of the river were very many trees on both sides on the other. Then said I, he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, and we read that verse number 10, and it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand didn't he say we're going to be fishers of men? <laughs> Shall stand upon it from Ingedi unto Ingalim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. But listen, but the miry places thereof and the marshes there shall not be healed they shall be given to salt now i hope you understand what that is saying verse 11 but the miry you know what miry means there swamp somebody said a few years ago we're going to drain the swamp and when they began to drain the swamp all kinds of creatures came out they were all connected together they were all in cahoots. They all had an agenda to hide their evil doings behind each other. And this man that thought he was going to drain the swamp found out that it was too much for one man to do. He tried his very best. But here the Bible is saying, but the swamp places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. It's just going to flavor things. So when you feel like the government is going to come and get us, let that just flavor you. That's all salt does, right? You can't sit down and have a plate of salt. That's no good. But you can have a plate and put a little salt. These people, they think they're going to, uh, to, to scare us. They're just going to make us run closer to God. <laughs> they're just going to make my meal taste so much better. The word of the Lord is going to taste so much better. The, the water of the river is going to be so much better. Amen. Let's stand. There is the river. And it flows from deep within. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. I know there's a lot going on. And we're not hiding our heads in the sand and saying it's not happening. It's happening. There's so much going on in, in, in among humanity. 
but we have trusted in the word of the Lord that Sister Garcia said, everything's going to pass away. Even this sickness is going to pass away. All the tribulations are going to pass away. The great tribulation is going to pass away, but your word is always going to remain. I pray that tonight we can stand on your word, get our lives ready. If there is things in our lives that are not a they're not in your law and in your perimeter. So God, let us, let us get inside the perimeter one more time and let us keep on walking. Dismiss us from this house, Lord, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Shake hands and be friendly.